Chapter 40 April 2nd I was in the kitchen this morning, checking out the fridge, when I heard screaming outside. No! Go away! Scram! I opened the back door. Abby was in the yard, holding the garden shovel like a baseball bat. In front of her was the Chemlawn man in his white jumpsuit, holding the end of a hose that snaked back to the can-shaped truck parked at the curb. He tried to reason with her. He told her that it was important to spray the ground now so all those evil weeds wouldn't have a chance to get started. But all Abby did was snarl, Plant murderer! Go spray that stuff on the hair growing out of your nose! The guy wasn't stupid. He didn't move. He knew if he did, he'd get a shovel across the kneecaps. He looked at me, but he saw I was laughing too hard to be any help. So he backed off, reeled in the hose, and drove away. Tonight, my father paid Abby a little visit in her room. I heard him ask her what did she think she was doing. Daddy, she said, he was killing the weeds. This may come as a shock, he said, but that happens to be the whole idea. It's a bad idea, she said. We have to have them, or we can't be an official wildlife habitat. Last time I checked, this was a home, not a habitat. Daddy. Daddy. Lecture coming. You were brought up all wrong. It's not your fault. Weeds aren't bad, Daddy. Weeds aren't even weeds. They're plants and flowers, just like daffodils and all. They have a right to live, too. How would you like it if a truck came to spray poison on you just because somebody decided to call you a weed? Next thing I heard was my father going back downstairs. Chapter 41 April 12th Most big kids are slow. Most fast kids are little. That's where I'm different. I'm big and fast. In sports, I most like to beat people by plowing them under, like football. And next year I'm going out for wrestling. But in the spring, there aren't any contact sports, just baseball and track and field. So I use my speed in track. Even though it doesn't look it, track is kind of like football. Sure, there's no ball and no shoulder pads, and nothing in your way except the string across the finish line. But you can demolish a kid just as much by beating him in a race as by plowing him under on a football field. It's about the first thing you do when you're little kids. You race. And the kid that wins, bam. Right away, he's the fastest, he's the best. Walk into any neighborhood, anywhere in the world, and ask some kids who's the fastest one there, and right away they'll tell you, they'll point to him. It's something everybody knows. It's a title that goes with you on your street, your school, your town. Fastest kid. That's me. We had race-offs today. The top three will run the 100-meter dash in our first track meet. I won. I beat the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th graders. The coach says he's surprised at how fast I am for being so big. He was also surprised at who came in second. Webb. He said he can't remember the two fastest runners ever before both being 7th graders. I wasn't real surprised at Webb. I still remember that time we raced to the mailbox and back and how close he was behind me. In the race-off today, he got a great start. He was out ahead of everybody. I guess he's been practicing his starts, too. But you don't beat Crasher the Dasher with a great start. I caught him at the 50-meter mark, and the rest was history. You can hardly see Mouse House anymore. It's deep in the bushes. There are leaves piled up around it, and the windows have pink flaps over them, cut out from an old wash rag. But there's still no one living there. The Kemlon guy hasn't come back. <laughs>